Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, please click the like button and please subscribe. I greatly appreciate it and thank you so much. Well, the crisis at the southern border of the United States continues to be driven by the Sin Sinaloa and Walisco cartels, fueling an opioid, O-P-I-O-I-D crisis that is a drug very dangerous drug opioid opioid or something i don't know i can't pronounce it but it's deadly as a you know, crisis whose death toll is still climbing according to analysts and u.s border officials the competition for market shares intensifies fentanyl is deadly has become an increasingly profitable export both more potent and easier to produce than heroin. Phenotol has been identified as a leading culprit of opioids overdoses in the United States and a driver of the op opioids epidemic, claiming record numbers of lives today. In an OPAD announcing legislation, I'm glad they showed how that to pronounce that because they did. It's O P dash E D OPED announcing less legislation for harsher penalties for fentanyl traffickers. Senator Marco Rubio said, according to the Drug Enforcement Administration, cartels increasingly target children and young people. The most obvious intense instance of this trend is the pills of rainbow fentanyl and the Sinaloa and Jalis Jalisco or Wallisco cartels are smuggling across the border which law officers have seized in 18 states this month. Please keep an eye on your teenagers and your children. According to Texas Tribune earlier this summer the Department of Homeland Security ended the Trump era Migrate Protection Protocols, a program that required immigrants to remain in Mexico while their claims were being adjudicated in the United States. Critics of the policy rolled back, such as Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton said Biden's ruling makes the border crisis worse. Well, of course it does. Primary data released for the Center for D Disease Control indicates that deaths from the fentanyl Overdoses reach an all-time high in 2021, just over 80,000. Oh, my goodness. 80,000. The overdose counter... Excuse me. The overdose counter is decelerating and still climbing. Heroin is roughly 30 times more expensive to produce than fentanyl, reported the Wall Street Journal. Bryce Pardo, the Associate Director of the RAD Cooperation's Drug Policy Research Center, said that heroin usually costs around 6000 per kilograms to produce, while fentanyl can be as cheap as $200 per kilogram. According to declassified DEA intelligent reports, the new generation, Jalisco, and the Sinaloa cartels are the primary traffickers of fentanyl in the United States. These cartels dominate trafficking corridors at the southern border leading into Arizona and California. Sure, it hit the big cities, then it spreads to the middle, then it spreads to the small towns. <clears throat> and they target uh, children that are let out of school for recess. They target them at the most because they can call them over to the fence. Uh-huh. No, it's just an old, old story. Mm-mm-mm. <clears throat> a recent press release from the Foundation of American Immigration Reform said that nearly 4.9 million people have illegally crossed the border into America in 18 months since President Biden took office. The endless flow of illegal aliens and the incursions of lethal narcotics pouring across our border will not end until this administration demonstrates a willingness to enforce our laws. President of FAIR, Dan Stein, said, 
The fair statement goes on to point out that the drugs seized at the border represent only a fraction of what is actually trafficked into the U.S. And in July alone, 469 million lethal doses of phenytoin were seized at the border. Oh, 469 million lethal doses of phenytoin was seized at the border. What does Biden think about that? Or does it just pass in one ear and out the other? Because there's nothing in between his head. <clears throat> the DEA reports that phenytoin is frequently and intentionally mixed in with other drugs like heroin or cocaine to increase its potency. Of course, blending these drugs together result in a much higher likelihood of an overdose. Without laboratory testing, it's impossible to know how much of each drug is present. God bless our young people. You gotta teach them. You gotta teach them. Sit them down and really teach them. And if you see them acting strange and, and just, what do I want to say, like they're out in outer space all the time, their pupils are dilated, and their speech is slurred, and they're tired, and they're wore out, and they're argumentative, you better ask for help. You better be questioning that child, that teenager. Nine times out of ten, he's been hit. Yep, somebody's passed him something in school. The ones that are working for the cartel, the cartel hires uh, school kids to work for him. Oh, yeah. And the parents had no idea whatsoever, no idea. It's just terrible. Absolutely horrifying. Oh, my goodness. Let's open up this one and see what I've got here. The Santa's relocation program brings attention the border crisis has long deserved. Despite how one may feel about the tactics being employed by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, there is no denying that he's bringing America's immigration crisis to the national spotlight. DeSantis has remained in the national news thanks to his decision to send migrants to Florida to self-proclaim sanctuary cities including a group of 48 migrants he sent last week to Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. Yeah, they're supposed to be a sanctuary. They treated them people like crap. The Biden administration has been quick to criticize DeSantis' relocating program, most recently when it was rumored that DeSantis was sending a plane full of uh, migrants to Biden's home state of Delaware. Well, why not? Biden was, was shipping them on airplanes in the middle of the damn night to get them to the United States. Come on now. <clears throat> Our heads up did not come from the governor DeSantis because his only goal is, as he's made it really clear, is to create chaos and use immigrants fleeing communism as political pawns, said the White House Press Secretary Karine Jean Pierre. So it's about creating political theater for him. No, I, I can't quite believe that. No, I can't. The plane never did go to Delaware, leaving Delaware officials, White House officials, and members of the press waiting at the airport. Incidents such as this demonstrates the intensity scrutiny DeSantis is under, which in turn brings attention to the border crisis. Jeannie Tear, T-A-E-R, T-A-R, Jeannie Tear, Tire, reporter for the Daily Caller, was at the airport in Delaware where the migrants were rumored to be landing. I've never seen this much media at the border, just here in Delaware, she wrote. The officials at the Delaware governor's office are here at the airport in Georgetown. They're expecting a plane of migrants. Stay tuned. The Daily Caller co-founder Neil Patel underscored this point. The biggest problem with the growing border crisis is nobody seems to care, Patel wrote. The people who write for America's top newspapers and the talking heads on American television are in the big cities. 
My news company, The Daily Caller, has had reporters all over these border communities, he continued. The corporate media, not so much. Patel also emphasized the toll the immigration crisis has taken on America in particularly border towns. The result has been catastrophic. Catastrophic, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> I'm tired, can't you tell? <laughs> catastrophic of America, wrote Patel. It's also been a tragedy for many migrants. Oh, yes, it has. God love them. Your heart's got to go out to them. They never know where they're going to be in the next minute, ten minutes, or an hour. How sad. No way to lay down, no food to eat, no water to drink. No one has paid a larger price for the complete breakdown on the border than America's border towns. That is so true. Very, very true. Unreal. Very, very unreal. Well, let's see what I got coming up here next. Oh, yes. Hundreds of New York City teachers fired for refusing vaccination mandate. Hundreds of New York City public school teachers are now unemployed after the city's Department of Education terminated them for refusal to comply with the district's vaccine mandate. The New York Post reports that with the additional 850 educators let go for resisting the compulsory, 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 compulsory jabs, the total of school employees given their walking papers in the city has reached 1,950. No freedom. Is the pandemic going to go up? Are we all in danger? Do we, you know? What, what's going on? We can't be free anymore? We can't say no, I'd rather not. I'll take care of myself, thank you. <clears throat> Before the firing of the 850 teachers, another 1,300 employees placed an administrative leave decided to show proof of vaccination and retain their positions. Those who were fired also lost health benefits. The system said that those who did not show up with their paperwork proving vaccination had voluntarily resigned. It was last October 4th when then the New York City Mayor Bill de Blazo, Blazo put the mandate out for 148,000 public school staff members. Roughly 5% objected to being forced to take the COVID-19 jab and were placed on unpaid leave. When are they going to learn? Those shots are not what they're cracked up to be. Come on. <clears throat> New York Eric Adams continue, continued the policy, saying that city workers showed residents that they are doing the right thing by being vaccinated to protect themselves, the New York City citizens. And the teachers are far from the only public sector employees to lose their jobs over refusing the mandate. Governor Kathy Hochul, H-O-C-H-U-L, oversaw the firing of ten, tens of thousands of health care workers after she carried on the state's mandate to include staffers at medical facilities. Police officers and firefighters also were terminated for refusing to get the shots. Firing hundreds of city teachers only exacerbates the problem facing in New York City and across the region. The New York State United Teachers Association reports that roughly 180,000 new educators must be hired over the next decade, and there's already a serious ongoing shortage. It's unpardonable that U.S. employees continue to lose their livelihoods over COVID-19 vaccinations. President Joe Biden recently declared the pandemic to be over, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention admitted that vaccines can be effective, ineffective, at controlling the spread. They're not what they're cracked up to be. They're ineffective at controlling the spread. Also, the CDC recognizes that the protections and the humidity immunity provided by having a prior infection. 
Still, New York City teachers and others across the country continue to suffer due to their personal stands. This is inexcusable. I agree. Totally and completely. My goodness. And that deal about Ron uh, DeSantis, well, if uh, he was uh, sending those immigrants to where they should have went, who ordered them to cross the border, but he got the others looking somewhere else for them. <laughs> well, it's kind of tricky, but I got to applaud him. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I'm going to look for another video or something of interest to do for another video. But uh, stay safe. And I will be back a little bit later. God bless. Stay safe. Check your children. Check your teenagers. I'm going to keep reminding all parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, you know, watch out for your young. Yes. Okay, I'll be back. I got to find my camera, give you a good smile, good wave. I'll be back.